Hello fellow gardeners. Well, we invite you in to our home for another devotion this morning. We want to thank you for being with us. Uh, we're going to talk about a topic today is entitled Alone. You know, so many people in this world are alone. Uh, we're coming to you from pray, Morning Praise by Bob and Maria Spangler again. And we're going to start out by talking about Jesus. There was one time that he was alone. Any other time than that, he always had his father that he could talk to. He could go out and pray to. And so anyway, Judy's going to read Mark 15, 33 and 34. Mark 15, 33 and 34 out of King James Bible. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at that ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now that was the only time that he was alone. He was on the cross. They had put him on the cross, and he was fixing to die for our sins. Every one of us. Your sins, my sins, Judy's sins, even the ones that put him on the cross. Because you remember he said, Lord, forgive them, for they know what, know what they do. And so he was so alone, and uh, but he was fixing to die for all the sins of the whole world. Now remember, I mean, just imagine how many sins there are over the entire world. That's what Jesus was dying for, for everyone's sin. And God could not look upon these sins. And so he had to withdraw his spirit from the Lord during that little bit of time he was dying by himself. Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you at this time now, and we just want to thank you for being our father. We want to thank you for being our friend that we can uh, pray to, that we can uh, talk to, we can read your word, and we thank you for Jesus dying upon the cross for our sins. The only way for us to get out of this sinful world is through the blood of Jesus. And we thank you for that, and be with us now as we read your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, in October 10, 1991, in Ad Adventist Review, a Dr. Marler, uh, excuse me, I'm on the wrong page. Let me get under here. I'm trying to the wrong one. Uh, Max, uh, in his book, No Wonder They Call Him the Savior, tells the story of Judith Bucknell, who was suicidal victim number 106 in Miami, Florida, during 1980. So many people were alone and so lonesome. We would know little about her had she not kept a diary that reveals that this terrible loneliness this 38-year-old woman had and endured. She was only 38 years old, but she was writing every day in her journal. And Judith was not on drugs or, wel or welfare or a social outcast. Rather, she was respectable and wore designer clothes. She lived in an apartment that overlooked the bay but her loneliness caused her to write. I see people together, and I am so jealous, I want to throw up. What about me? What about me? What, who is going to love me, Judith Bucknell? The diary entry continued. I feel so old, so unloved, unwanted, abandoned, used up. I want to cry and sleep forever. I am alone. And I want to share something with somebody. I pray if there's any of you out there like into that, if you truly are alone, listen, you do have Jesus. But I'm going to throw a little something out to you, a, a charge I'm going to give you. I pray that if you make some cupcakes or bake some cookies, just take a couple of them cupcakes or take three or four cookies and put them in a little bag and go over to your neighbor that you know is by their self. Or it don't have to be that. It can be a man or woman or whatever. Go over to them and just say, hey, I just made some cookies or I made some uh, cupcakes and I just want to share some with you. I live right down the street here and I just want to be your friend. Do that. It will help them and it will help you at the same time. Even if you're not lonesome. Even if you are lonesome. It still gives you a, a door to have a friend. Cries of loneliness fill the world. We hear the voices of the single, the
the divorcees, the widows and the widowers, and those in a, a convalescent homes filled with sighs and suffering, shuffling feet. More voices in our overcrowded prisons join the moans and cries of loneliness. Loneliness exists even in families, rich and poor alike. In fact, if one listed the major problem of our cruel world, it would be loneliness near the top. God never made us to be alone. The author of Ecclesiastes observes that two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift him up, will lift up his companion or her companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. What's the answer? We can get, begin by reaching out to others and making friends. And you can do that. Taking a little cupcake with you or some cookies. And Now me being a produce man, I'm always, you know, got peaches or something that's good. And when I get hold of some good peaches or good tomatoes, I always like to go and share these just to let people know that I'm thinking about them. And Judy and I, we do that all the time. Well, not all the time, but I mean, we do it real often, every week. And we, we encourage you to do something like that too. You get a hold of some peaches that taste real good, just buy a few more and go share them with your neighbors or your friends. We even do it at church and, and let everybody get them a couple of three peaches and some of them come back and say they enjoyed them so well that they hadn't had a good peach like that. It just blesses your heart, but it really blesses those people that get them. So anyway, I'm encouraging you to do that. But deeper than that, we must let Jesus be our constant companion. There's the companion that we have that's the true companion is Jesus. Even as Jesus, who tread the wine presses of suffering alone, had his father as a constant companion. But now that Jesus has rose and went back to his father, he can be our friend. The closest that Jesus ever came to being alone was on the cross when he cried out the words of our next text. Yet earlier he had told his disciples, I am not alone because the Father is with me. But then when he got right down to the point he was fixing to die for all the sins, God had to withdraw his spirit from him so he could die alone or otherwise it wouldn't have been the pay that we wanted for our sins. Praise God that you don't have to be alone in this world even though you may live by yourself. Jesus is always our elder brother and constant companion. So we want to encourage you this morning. You got, you got anything else you want to add to it, Judy? Or we said about everything we need to say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we thank you for being with us. Now we're going to pray and, and close this down. Father in heaven, again, we come to you and we thank you for being our heavenly father. We thank for Jesus being our elder brother. And we thank you we can always come to you, not only through prayer, but through reading our words in the Bible. And Lord, we just pray that you'll encourage us anytime we get low. Uh, look for a friend to go and visit. Do something like that. You don't have to be alone in this world. We thank you, Father, for all this, for paying the price for us. Now then, be with us as we each depart here from this meeting today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, we can all find good friends. And I'm thankful for the friends that we have at our Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have some very good friends, and we appreciate them. That's one way you can find a good friend is by going to church. It doesn't have to be Seventh-day Adventist Church. It can be a church. Just find you a church to go to, and I'm sure you'll find a friend. Now, I'll tell you what, our pastor challenged us to all of us in the church that day that he says, you know these people sitting on these pews because you see them every Sabbath. But I want to challenge you to open your house and invite some of them over to your house and sit around your table and eat and communicate together. And Judy and I have done that now. We've done this about eight or nine, ten Thursday nights. We do it on Thursday night. We usually have six to eight come over to the house from the church. We try to get different people that don't associate together. We like to get some from over here that sits over on this side of the church and some over here, you know, and bring them in and let them get acquainted around the table. And you can't believe what good that has done for all of us. 
now we know each other more personally, and I'm going to tell you, you have more and more friends as you do that. So we encourage you to do that too. Get into your church somewhere. Get to making friends. Invite them into your home, and then let them invite you to theirs. And so anyway, we're quite shutting down now. And you won't be alone. You won't be alone, okay? Listen, if you enjoyed this, punch the button, ring the bell, and we'll come back and make you another one. Even make a comment down there. We try to find time to read those comments, and we thank you for them.